Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to show you how we can use Lambda and dot lock to select rows from a pandas data frame. Now, I want to show you each of these individual pieces and then pull them all together. So let's start off with import pandas as PD and from pandas import series and data frame. Because I always like to have those around. And I'm going to create a data frame based on my favorite taxi data. This is taxi data from I even want to say like 2016 in New York City. It doesn't really matter that much. DF equals PD read CSV of taxi.csv. And I'm going to say use calls equals. And I'm just going to ask for a few things here. I'm going to say here passenger count and trip uh, distance and total amount. All right, we're just going to get three of those things there. And there we go. Now I have uh, 10,000 rows, well, 10,000 minus one rows. And I have those three columns. Great. So. How can I get those rows in which the passenger count was greater than four? Well, that's not such a hard thing to do. What I can do is, first of all, you know, uh, uh, get a Boolean series based on passenger count. So I can say DF of passenger count. Oops, uh, passenger count is greater than four. And I get back indeed a Boolean series, a true set of true false values that indicate where that is true and where that is false. And then what I can do is I can use this Boolean series, oops, use this Boolean series to select rows from our data frame using dot lock. And that's because dot lock, um, uh, uh, if dot locks first argument, can be or is a row selector. And it can be a bunch of different types. That's going to come back to help us out. So if I say df.lock of df passenger count is greater than four, what's happening here? Well, first we look inside the square brackets here. This is going to be evaluated first. And this is going to give us that Boolean series telling us which rows we want and which ones we don't. And dot lock will pick up on that and only show us those rows where passenger count is greater than four. And we get back all of the rows in the data frame where that is true, which turns out to be 889 rows as opposed to the 10,000. So there were a bunch of them, but it's not an overwhelming number. Okay, so far, so good. This works just fine, but it turns out that dot lock can also be used with a lambda. Now, what the heck is a lambda? So when we create or when we define a function in Python, Python, can't spell Python, eh? using def, we're really doing two things. First of all, we are creating a function object. And second of all, we are assigning that function object to a variable. That's right, a function name. When we say def ABCD, ABCD is just a variable that happens to refer to a function object. So if I say here, um, you know, some sort of function def square of x, return x to the second power very useful function right square of five well, what's going on well square is a variable that refers to the function object we created here so we created the function object and we assign it to a variable and now we get square five back so if we want we can create a function object without assigning it to any variable that is done with lambda now, there are a whole bunch of restrictions in place in Python for using Lambda. It can only be one expression, so you can't assign inside of it. It's just one expression, whatever the value of that expression is, that's what's returned. You can't even say return. It's just we get the value back. So I can say here Lambda of x, x to the second power. And right here, this is my Lambda expression, and this returns a function object, right? It even says function under main of Lambda of x. But how do I execute that function object? Well, it's too bad, it's gone, right? Lambdas, Lambda returns a function object. And we refer to this as an anonymous function because it has no name. I could, in theory, say square two equals this, but you really aren't supposed to do this. But it, it does work, right? If I now say square two of, let's say six, it returns 36 because I took this function object and I assigned it to a variable. I basically did here what def does, I just did it manually. But what if I don't, what if I don't want to assign it? 
can I invoke it? And the answer is yes. Well, how do I invoke a function? I invoke a function with parentheses, of course. So I can say this lambda of seven. Will this work? No, of course it will not work. Because it thinks that I'm trying to run two as a function with seven as the argument, and it gets very, very confused. What I could do though, is I could say here, fun parentheses around there and there. And isn't this an easy way to square the number seven? I'm sure you agree. Okay, maybe not. Maybe this is like ridiculously complex. But it turns out that lambdas, lambda is really useful when I want to create a, a function that'll be passed to another function. And I won't want to use that function again. See where I'm getting? All right, let's get back to our dot lock. So if I say df dot lock, if I say here, inside of dot lock, I can pass a function object, normally defined with lambda, that takes one argument, a data frame, and then can return the value, well, a, 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 a Boolean value indicating if we want the row or not. So what I'm going to do then is inside of my lambda, we're going to have an expression because every lambda has an expression. It's going to return true or false for something. How am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to say df lock. I'm going to say lambda. And then, well, what am I going to call it? Don't call it df. That would be super confusing. It is very common to call it df underscore. Why df underscore? Because underscore is typically used as a temporary variable name. So df underscore means, oh, that temporary data frame. And then df underscore. And then I can do whatever I want. I can say df underscore of passenger count is greater than four. And what am I going to get back? Look at this. I get back exactly the same results as before, 889 rows and three columns. Now, why would I do this rather than what I did before? First of all, um, this gives me a lot more flexibility, right? I can do all sorts of wild stuff inside of there, including comparing columns and so forth. I can calculate things. It is a function. I can only have one expression there, but it is a function. And the more complex things get, the more you might want to use this. At the same time, I do want to caution you a little bit that for many people in the Python world, Lambda gives them like, like you know, <laughs> it makes them feel very, very odd. It gives them the chills because they just sort of get scared of it. I hope you see here that you don't need to be scared of Lambda, but it, and it is used very often in method chaining when you're sort of doing one query, dot another query, dot another query to get some sort of result. Um, I have become increasingly fond of doing this, even though Lambda is typically frowned upon in mainstream Python because people get so like scared of it. But uh, this is growing on me, definitely, definitely growing on me. And I hope that you can see how it matches up with what we did before. Now, of course, I can do all sorts of you know, other things as well. I can say here, I want passenger count is greater than four, right? And we can say here, df underscore of, let's say, trip distance is less than 10, right? So you can start getting all sorts of complex stuff. Could you do this with our Boolean indexes as before? Yes, this is a little shorter, a little nicer in my opinion, and a little more flexible just to sort of play with. All right, so I hope that you are now a little more comfortable with using dot lock, using lambdas, uh, and combining them together to sort, or not to sort, to select particular rows from your data frames. If this was interesting, and if it wasn't, let me know, leave some comments, leave questions, tell me what you're thinking, tell me what topics you want me to cover. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll be back more real soon with lots more of Python and Pandas.